This is a snowboarder. This is some concrete. And this is a concrete snowboard. And in today's video, we are going to be going over quite literally everything you could possibly need to know about getting started with concrete snowboarding. From which boards to use, to which wheels to use, how to ride the board, and so much more. This is going to be more information than anyone could possibly need about concrete snowboarding. So stick around for this one to find out how you can start snowboarding the streets in 2024. Let's go. So what are freeboards? Well, they're a kind of skateboard with extra spinning center wheels and hooks, which effectively create the two edges that you would find on a snowboard. And because of that, they allow you to effectively snowboard on concrete. Now these boards are so much fun to use especially if you don't have local ski slopes nearby to learn to snowboard. The movements of the freeboard are incredibly reminiscent to those of a snowboard, and similarly all of the tricks that you'd learn can be transferred to snowboarding as well. So from riding and holding your toe side and heel side edges, to spins and drifts and calves, all the way to jump 360s, over slides, riding and switch, and honestly the list is almost endless. There are so many things that you can do on a freeboard and it is so much fun to do them. And even if you're not interested in learning to snowboard, freeboarding as a sport in of itself has so many unique selling points. I mean, the community is incredible and there are events all around the world. From Morocco to Tenerife, all the way over to the States, there will be a freeboard event no matter where you live. And even more than this, the kinds of roads that you can use are completely unique, opening up so many new avenues of where you can skate, whether that's a skate park, mountain roads, city roads, and so many more. Freeboarding is amazing. And all of this is possible thanks to these spinning center wheels. So the way that they work is you have a caster wheel that spins, now, as you spin it, it actually has a tendency to realign itself, and that's because of a spring system at the base of the center wheel. Now, these wheels are closer to the ground than the two other edge wheels, and so the board reproduces toe side and heel side edges as it rocks, as you can see here. <laughs> So that hopefully gives you a brief introduction to what freeboarding is. So what are the kinds of boards that you could buy right now? So just like many other markets, the freeboarding market is split into brand new and secondhand options. When it comes to buying a freeboard, whether it's new or secondhand, the main difference will be the trucks. Now, if you do buy a freeboard secondhand, you're likely going to be finding what's called a G3 or a G3R board, just like this one. Now, the difference between these two is not really that substantial. And to be honest, I wouldn't really worry about whether you've got a G3 or a G3R. And the main difference is just this hanger where on the G3R it curves upwards which means that you have more rocker which is the gap between the ground and these edge wheels. So as you can see here this is a G3R now I'll go and get my G3. This I mean, to be honest, you can't really distinguish them, and even for riding them, they're not that different. So if you're looking to buy a G3 or G3R board, the benefits are that they're more all-round suited boards. You can use them for freestyle, you can use them from downhill, and they're probably not going to break if you jump around on them a lot. But something to look out for when you're buying these is these little bars here. As you can see here, we've got three bars. Now that is because this is one of the later series of the G3 boards, whereas if you buy an earlier series truck, like this one, which is my main one, it will only have one bar. Now, if you can, I would really advise to try and get the one with three bars on it. And that's because this part is known as the base plate. And if you've only got one metal beam here, the base plate is actually a lot less durable than if you have three. Otherwise, you should probably look at the bearings. So roughly speaking, that should cover most of the things to look out for if you're buying a secondhand freeboard. I do know I haven't talked about the wheels yet, but that will come later. But that's relevant whether you're buying them new or secondhand. If instead you'd like to buy new, then you have two options from Freeboard Europe, the Freeboard 5 and the Freeboard 5X. Now, in my opinion, the Freeboard 5 and the G3 and G3R are very similar, and so I probably wouldn't advise anyone to buy the Freeboard 5 if they can instead buy a Freeboard G3 or G3R secondhand, only because the G3 and G3Rs are just so incredibly cheap that it's near impossible for Freeboard to compete on how competitive the prices are on the secondhand marketplace. I'm not affiliated with Freeboard in any way, but if you can afford it, it would be great to support such a fantastic company. I love what they do with the events, and it's only thanks to them that Freeboarding is still alive. However, there is still a massive selling point to what Freeboard have to offer brand new, and that is the Freeboard 5X. Now, not only does the Freeboard 5X have an improved technology for the spinning center wheel, but it also has these incredible springs on the side of the trucks. Now, if you've never seen a Freeboard before, these springs look absolutely crazy. And to be honest, it's probably the most technologically impressive skateboard that I've ever seen, at least. Now, these springs are quite amazing because what they allow for is a continuous transition between your toe side and heel side edges, which you wouldn't have got on any of the other previous Freeboards. You can also twist the board both ways at the same time, which is more reminiscent of snowboard 
snowboarding. And overall, it's a consensus that the Freeboard 5X is far closer to snowboarding than any of the other previous Freeboards. They go for around $420, and if money is no object, then it's definitely worth considering the Freeboard 5X. It's definitely targeted more for downhill, so don't expect to be doing freestyle on it because it's not as durable as the other boards, but it more than makes up for this by how much better it is for downhill. Now one of the big things about buying a new freeboard is the kinds of wheels that you're going to have on the boards. Now when you buy them, they're going to come with these light blue wheels known as the cascade wheels. And as centre wheels on the bottom, you're going to have the orange asphalt wheels. Now these wheels are pretty good for learning, so if you're starting out they're actually pretty decent. However, when it comes to going fast downhill, they don't really have much stopping power, mainly because the surface of the wheel is quite narrow. Another disadvantage to these wheels are the centre wheels, which are these ones here. Now for sure they are good enough for learning, but for Going at very high speeds, I'm not sure if the top riders would want to use these. Now I personally don't go anywhere near fast enough for the centre wheels to melt, but there have been multiple recorded cases of centre wheels melting. And given the quality of these wheels, I probably wouldn't trust them to go down a very steep hill in the summer. Instead, for the wheels, you might be looking at these, which are called the Boro centre wheels. Now these are the most durable freeboard centre wheels you can buy, and they're easily the most reliable as well. And this is where it's actually worth discussing why buying a second-hand freeboard could be better than buying new, and that's because you might find a deal with improved wheels. Now, as we discussed, if you buy a brand new freeboard now, you're going to get the Cascades and the Libida center wheels. But if you buy second hand, you might be lucky enough to find yourself a deal on a board with these wheels, which are known as the Deblues. Now, the Deblues are probably the most popular wheel used by all freeboarders. Not because they're necessarily the best at downhill, but because they're the best all round. Now, there's a few reasons for this. One is the wide base, which effectively means that you have a lot of control of your speed. So if you're going really fast, you can cut your speed really quickly and you feel a lot more confident going down steeper hills. Another benefit, although it could also be seen as a disadvantage, is the fact that the urethane is quite strong. So when you do these drifts, they're not going to flat spot that easily. But the durability of the urethane of the Deblues is actually a selling point for a lot of riders. However, some might see this as a disadvantage because some of the top riders prefer to use entitlement urethane's height privileges. Now these wheels are very similar to the Deblues, except the urethane is a little bit softer. And so it means if you're going very fast, down a steep hill possibly in the summer, they have a tendency to leave a mark of urethane in the road. Now this feeling is incredibly satisfying and a lot of riders will put on brand new height privilege wheels just for a bomb down an incredible mountain road. So roughly speaking, those are the things that you'd want to be considering with the freeboard wheels. The best all round wheels for these are the Deblues and the height privileges, but if you want to do freestyle, to be honest, the edge wheels don't matter too much. It's only really for downhill that it comes into play. And as we saw in my last video, there's all kinds of wheels that you could use for the freeboard and to be honest, if you're just learning, I really wouldn't worry about the differences. These red ones are called the low riders. You might see these if you buy an older generation board. These green ones, where the pattern has now worn off, are called the green goes. And these are just random low quality wheels, which I've tried on the freeboard. Now, if you're considering buying cheap wheels for the freeboard, I'd kind of advise against it because they tend to make a kind of horrible noise when you drift with them. And overall, there just isn't really any point in buying cheap freeboard wheels because you can buy secondhand freeboards, which have the highest quality wheels for so cheap and then you'll get spare freeboard parts in the process. So I hope that gives you all the details you need about the kinds of wheels you'd use on the freeboard. But I will stress again that if you're starting out there's really no need to be concerned about the wheels. You could learn so much on the freeboard even with some of the worst quality parts because you're just not going to be going fast enough to where it becomes an issue. So yeah hopefully for a beginner that is more than enough information to get started with freeboarding. The next most important thing will be learning to freeboard. So rather than re-explaining this I'm going to set up a sort of comprehensive list that you can refer back to so that you can learn to freeboard step by step. So for the complete beginner I'd recommend three videos. The first being last year's comprehensive guide to freeboarding and the next two would be the total beginner series where I taught my friend who had never skated before how to freeboard. In those three videos we cover more than enough to get started with the basics of freeboarding. Once you know the basics I'd really recommend learning to push and how to carve and finally to review the three tricks that I mentioned in my last video. I have all of these guides in the description below so that you can select them and watch them whenever. I thought that it made much more sense to just refer to each video rather than going over the same information again. Once you've got your board set up and you know how to freeboard, I think the last step would really be to understand the actual philosophy of freeboarding. And for this, I'd recommend my trip videos from Switzerland, Greece, and across Europe. I really think that with those videos, you'll start to understand what freeboarding is really about because it's not actually just a skateboard, but a worldwide community of people that turn their local hills into concrete snow slopes. So yeah, that does it for my updated comprehensive guide to freeboarding. I tried to go into a a lot more detail this time, especially with regards to board parts, so that you can really understand which 
freeboard is best for each use case. At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter which board you get, whether it's a G3, G3R, 5, 5X, or even an old Alpha series, they're all really good to learn on. The most important thing is to really make sure to commit to learning it, because it might not be that enjoyable at the start, but freeboarding is incredibly fun once you know how to carve and cut speed. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a good one.